Greetings, fellow Earthlings and viewers across the World Wide Web. This is Tune215, and right now we're in the state of Pennsylvania. We're currently in the city of Philadelphia. Today we're going to be doing a virtual tour of the Logan Hood here in North Philadelphia. Right now we're on Broad Street. We're going to make this right-hand turn on Rockland Street. We're at the intersection of Broad and Rockland. Today's high is about 48 degrees. We have the 1400 block of Rockland to our left hand side and the 1300 block of Rockland to our right hand side. We're facing northbound, behind us is southbound, to our left is westbound, to our right is eastbound. made a right on Rockland. We have several businesses on our left and on our right hand side. We're at the intersection of Rockland and Old York Road. We're at 13th and Rockland. On top of the 13th street sign, there is a CCTV camera. On our right, we have the Renaissance Haitian Baptist Church. We're approaching Kamak Street, passing a business called Blue Green. It looks like a convenience store on our right hand side. We're at 12th and Rockland. Passing Marvine Street, the 4800 block of Marvine. We're now at 11th and Rockland. I'm gonna take this right hand turn. We're gonna go around the block and we're gonna try to come down Warnock Street. We're approaching Loudon, Loudon Street, the 1000 block of Loudon. We're gonna make this left-hand turn in the Logan neighborhood. On my right-hand side, there was once a community, a thriving community that no longer exists. The whole community was leveled. Shout out to JB. Let's make this left-hand turn on the 4800 block of Warnock Street. We're on a two story row home block. The homes have raised porches. There's about two sets of steps to get up to your doorway. Some of the homes have a lawn in front of their property. There's a variety of colors. If you check out the rooftops and you look at the crown, it's a very distinct rooftop style. We just exited the 4800 block of Warnock Street. Let's enter the next block, which is the 4900 block of Warnock Street. Let me be very cautious when crossing this street.
Now, if you notice, the rooftops on this block, they changed up from the last block. On the right, we have flat tops. On the left, we have an A-style roof. We're at Ruscombe, Ruscombe Street. I'm going to take this up one more block further north, and then we're gonna come down 11th Street. We're at Lindley Avenue. We're gonna make this left-hand turn on Lindley Avenue. There's some street work on my right-hand side, so we're not gonna go right. We could have went straight, but I'm gonna go left so we can come back down 11th Street. And we'll take another pass by through the community that was demolished. To my understanding, it was built on a wasteland, I believe, where the sanitation department used to dispose of the waste. And the residents had made several complaints over the years about the properties having issues as far as foundational issues. And eventually, I believe, many of them sunk and or had major structural issues, structural damage. And they eventually I'm not sure if they bought out the community, if they compensated everyone appropriately for their homes before they had to be relocated or what, but there were several blocks in the area that are no longer there. They no longer exist. Just the memories, the fond memories of the residents who once lived here. All right, we're back at 11 from Ruscombe. We're gonna continue moving forward. Now we're traveling southbound on the 4900 block of 11th Street in Logan. Now check out these rooftops. Pay attention to those details. I pay attention to those details. Look at the rooftops. It's the third variation of rooftop. It's a whole different style from the first two that we saw. The ones on our right, back at 11th and Rockland. I'm gonna make this left-hand turn. We have the Holy Trinity Bethel Presbyterian Church to our right. We're passing Warnock and Rockland. We're gonna make this right-hand turn on 10th Street. We have Shalom Baptist Church on our left at the intersection of 10th and Rockland. We're gonna make this right-hand turn. So if you look directly in front of me, this was once a block and these blocks had homes in them and the homes are no longer there. It was once a community of residents. Now it's just open land. 
I see young folks all the way down the block. It's barricaded, so you can't go in. They have those giant cinder blocks. Over the years, there's been a fair amount of, of dumping in this area. People take advantage just because they see that it's empty and at nighttime it's, it's relatively discreet. There's, there's, there's nobody out here watching that property. It's a big piece of land too. It spans a, a dozen or so blocks, I would say. Let's make this left hand turn on Hutchison. No, we can't, I'm sorry, I apologize. We're gonna make this left hand turn on 9th Street. Then we can enter through 8th and take a look at it from that side. This all the property on my right hand side is what's left of the community that used to be here. Okay, now we're gonna make this left on 9th. We're at 9th and Loudon. Now, based on areavibes.com, the Logan area receives an F rating based on crime and safety. Total crime in the area is said to be at 127% above the national average. We're passing a four bus stop. We're at 9th and Rockland. Violent crime in this area is 257% above the national average. We're passing 9th and Ruscom. On our left hand side, we have a school. It's currently called Lindley Academy Charter School. However, I don't know if that's the original name. Maybe an OG resident could let us know if that's the original name or what was the school that used to be there. I believe it's an elementary school. Right now we're at the intersection of 9th and Lindley. Property crime in the area is 102% above the national average. Some quick crime facts. In Logan Fern Rock, you have a one in 19 chance of becoming a victim of crime. We're gonna continue forward to the 5100 block of 9th Street. Check out these houses right here on my left and on my right. Again, the facade changes up a bit. On the left, we got shingles on the rooftop. On the right, we have terracotta shingles, a completely different style. And it looks like the properties are made with limestone and mortar, at least the, the, the front of the property. We're at Duncannon Ave and 9th Street. I'm gonna make this right-hand turn on Duncannon. And then we're gonna come down 8th Street There's alleyways that are large enough to fit multiple vehicles. Many of these people appear to have garages in the back of their property. We have Barrett Playground directly in front of us. It's no outlet at the end of the 700 block of Duncannon Ave. I'm gonna make this right. Let me be very cautious. Make sure no traffic pops out. Check out these rooftops on my left. Whoa, talking about a variation. They just changed the game with this one. The ones on my left stand out damn near the most. I feel like they have a Dutch influence. If you take a look at Dutch homes or Dutch styled architecture, that's what it reminds me of. So Logan Fern Rock is said to be safer than 16% of the cities in Pennsylvania. So we're in the Logan neighborhood, but Fern Rock is also a neighborhood that neighbors this area, which also can be considered its own neighborhood. When you pull it up on the map, it comes up together, it's highlighted together. It's even highlighted in some cases with Alany. Yeah, sometimes depending on which map you look at, it's a more broader highlighted area. 
and, and old, old guys. My bad, old guys. But it's right next to Olney. It's literally right next to that whole little cluster. They're all side by side next to each other. You got Olney, you got Ogons, you got Fern Rock, you got Logan. A little bit up the road, you got East Oak Lane, West Oak Lane. We're at 8th and Ruscombe. Looks like this gentleman is uh, doing some asphalt work. On the right hand side, there's a giant pile of what looks to be like raw asphalt. That's what they use to patch holes. Some of these properties, they chose to keep the grass lawn. Others, they cemented it off. The ones on the right-hand side have larger lawns. I would say their lawns estimated are about eight feet. The ones on my left, their lawns are about three feet in length. We're at Eighth and Rockland. Oh man, I wanted to go forward. And we can't go left, because left is, all, is, is closed. There's cones in the street. We can't go forward. Because forward is closed. Wow, they're doing a lot of construction over here on my left on Franklin Street. So I'm going to make this right-hand turn on Rockland. And we're going to see if we can get one more view of the... Let's, let me see. How's this look? Let's risk it, guys. Let's take one for the team. Normally, I don't like to go through these alleyways. Because every time I go through one of these alleyways, I tend to ruin a factor of my vehicle. <laughs> but from afar, it didn't look too bad. Let me not speak too soon. One time I went through a whole alleyway and I got to the very end and it was damn near unexitable because I'm in a lowered vehicle <clears throat> with aftermarket lowering uh, coil coilovers, basically lowering springs that make the car very low. So sometimes driving on roads like this is not ideal, but hey, we're gonna take one for the team, baby. As you can see, some of these houses have back decks. It looks like most of them had garages, but some people converted their garages to apartments. I say apartments because there's a door. Some people probably actually store cars in their garages, while others probably just store stuff like a storage unit. Wow, this road right here is rough, whoa. Pretty rough terrain. You, you need like a like a doom buggy or something to go through here. All right, but that's okay. At least we get another peek at this vacant land. So you can read about this story online and you can learn more about what actually happened here. Uh, can I make a left here? Yeah, I can make a left. I'll make a left. We'll take this left just so that we can show you the span of the community. We're not going to go left because we're here on this block because they're doing work on this block. But on my right, it's all vacant. It's a lot of land. I would say six blocks in length, maybe, from what it appears. And it's right next to the Roosevelt Boulevard, which is considered to be one of the most dangerous highways in America. It's a lot of fatalities. <clears throat> now, check this out. You see all this dumping? Ton of dumping, right? I'm gonna make a U-turn just so we can go through this vacant uh, property. There's a street that goes through it. So you see all the dumping, right? There's a sign right there that says, private property, no dumping, no parking, no trespassing. Penalties include maximum fine of, you ready? $50,000 and or imprisonment. Take a look at the ground. Somebody dodged a bullet. Somebody out there owes the city 50 Gs. But I'll tell you something, what I've learned through experience, through traveling through many different communities, is it's awkwardly weird because the neighborhoods with the biggest trash problems have the highest fines. And the neighborhoods that are clean with the least amount of trash problems have the least fines. So it's 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 almost it's almost backwards in a sense. You would think that 
Let's make this left hand turn on 9th Street. This is probably gonna take us to the Roosevelt Boulevard, but it's okay, we'll come all the way around. I just wanna show you guys the magnitude of this empty space here. Check it out, it looks like you got Clip over here, which is the city's uh, cleanup team. They clean up graf graffiti, they clean up, as you can see, they were cleaning up trash there. Clip. Look at this, on my right, on my left, you see all this green space? This was once a community in Logan. Now it's just a ghost of his former self. We're gonna make this right-hand turn. Can we make it right here? Yeah, we should be able to make it right here. If not, I just turn it into a two-way. Check it out, look to my left, look to my right. We're on Hutchinson. Or, or what was once Hutchinson. It ran from my right to my left, but it's no longer there. On my right-hand side, you see the locals set up their own detail car wash right next to the empty lot we have 18 wheelers on my left and on my right as a big rig driver there's very limited places sometimes to park that allow those size commercial vehicles so i guess they take advantage of this since no one owns it per se i'm sure somebody owns the piece of land i don't know if the city may, maybe the city took ownership of it let's make this right hand turn there's signs on my left all on the poles that read Logan. Maybe the city took it back because if there was problems with the ground, I don't think they would have wanted anyone else to use the land yet. The big question is, can they build anything else there in the future? Would it be worth it? Is the land forever tainted? Did they work too soon to build those uh, homes and that's why they failed feel free to chime in I know as long as I can remember since I was a kid I've always came up this end and I've always seen it as what it is now but I'm a youngster so you gotta remember that On our left-hand side, we have Bethlehem Temple. That's the new Bethlehem Temple. All right, we're gonna make this left-hand turn on Rockland. This is near where we started. We're gonna make a left and then we're gonna head right. We're turning right on Marvine Street. And again, you see the variety in rooftops from block to block. The styles of homes change. And these are homes in pairs, two homes. Two homes connected with an alleyway in between. Almost like duplexes. And some people have open porches, some people have closed porches. We're at Ruscom. We're going to continue forward. Traveling northbound on Marvine. Is it Marvine or Marvine? Is it Polish or Polish? Potato, potato? I'll let you be the judge. I see the all-seeing eye of Horos on my right-hand side. This street in front of me is a bit rough and sketchy, so I'm going to turn off early. I'm going to have to cross over this. They're doing road work and they didn't finish it yet, so. 
Looks like they're still doing road work over here on 12th Street. We're at 12th and Lindley. I gotta be very careful right here. We just had the lowered vehicle discussion. Let's make this right-hand turn on 12th Street. We're gonna turn it on 12th. 12th and Lindley. We're coming off of Lindley, turning on 12th. Traveling northbound. We have the sanitation department picking up trash. It's trash collection day in this area. So NBC 10 reports on February 26, 2024, a man had his life taken in a shooting in the Philly Logan neighborhood. It happened on the 1100 block of Wagner Ave in the Logan section of North Philadelphia on a Monday morning. Let's make this right hand turn. We just passed Windrum. We could have kept on going straight and going through Windrum. We made a right on Duncannon. Let's take this a little further. Several blocks in front of me, and then we'll make a left. We're at 11th and Duncannon. We just passed the Windrum Manor Apartments on our left. There's another incident that happened in the area which was reported by Fox 29 Philadelphia. It was called a midday shooting in Philadelphia which claimed the life of a 37 year old man in the Logan neighborhood. A man is deceased after he was shot while driving Thursday afternoon in Philadelphia. He suffered a gunshot wound to the head. We're at 10th and Duncannon. You have the number four SEPTA bus in front of us. We just passed 10th and Duncannon. We're passing Hutchison. Up these houses on our left. They have that limestone and mortar. We're gonna make this left hand turn coming up. We already went right, now we're gonna make a left. We're on 8th and Duncannon. Make this left hand turn. On the 5200 block of 8th Street to our left, the 5100 block of 8th Street to our right. <clears throat> CBS News reported on May 11th, 2023, teen deceased, seven-year-old injured in the Logan quadruple shooting. We're gonna make this left-hand turn on Wellens, the 800 block of Wellens Street. This is a two-way street, so it is expected that both drivers share the same road, which means if somebody was coming in front of us, one of us would have to park up. Okay, we're gonna make this right-hand turn. We're on 9th Street, let's make this right-hand turn. Okay. 
We're gonna make this left hand turn. We're at 9th and Fisher. We're turning left on Fisher. So channel six ABC reports on Sunday, August 27th of 2023, we're passing Hutchison. Two teenagers were injured in a Philadelphia double shooting, which took place at 6 p.m. on the 5100 block of North 11th Street in Philadelphia's Logan section. So as you can hear, Aside from that beep, you can hear that there's a lot of shooting that takes place in and all around Philadelphia, including Logan. I'm gonna make this left-hand turn on Wagner Avenue, Wagner. We're currently on Wagner Avenue. Passing the 5300 block of Marvin Street. We're at the intersection of Fisher Ave and Wagner Ave. I'm gonna make this right-hand turn just because there's a lot of traffic behind me and everyone appears to be pretty impatient. We're approaching Somerville Ave, 1200 block of West Somerville Ave to our left, 1100 block to our right. We're gonna make this right hand turn on Somerville Ave. If we go left, we'll hit Broad Street, and then we can head towards Olney Transportation Hub. There was a recent shooting within the last couple years at the Alani Transportation bus stop, where I believe anywhere from seven to a dozen individuals were struck by gunfire. We're at 11th and Somerville. I'm gonna make this left-hand turn on 11th Street. I'm gonna allow the ambulance to go by. Ambulance gets the right of way. We're making a left on the 5400 block of 11th Street. We have the community house on our right-hand side at the intersection of 11th and Clarkson Ave. Let's make this right-hand turn on Clarkson Ave. We're turning on the 100 block of West Clarkson, 1000 block of West Clarkson Ave, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Let's make this right-hand turn on the 5400 block of Warnock Street.
So remember earlier I was saying how Fern Rock and Logan, they usually come up as being classified together. We're gonna make this left hand turn on Wagner Ave. Well, Fern Rock is a neighborhood in Upper North Philadelphia. It is bounded by Alany to the east, Ogons to the west, Logan to the south, and East Oak Lane to the north. We're at Tabor Road. I'm gonna make this left hand turn on Tabor. I'm gonna allow this vehicle to go because I'm not gonna be driving that fast, so I'm sure they're gonna not want me holding them up. And a little bit more context on that community being leveled. If you visit the Philly History blog, you can learn a little bit more about the situation. So atop the shifting toxic dump now known as the Logan Triangle. So that community that we drove through that was all leveled, that was called the Logan Triangle. In quotes, it reads, should nothing be done warned engineers after the 1986 Valentine's Day explosion and fire that destroyed a row of houses in Logan. Catastrophic failure of numerous dwellings is highly probable. Mm. So there was an explosion there too. That's amazing. We're at 11th and Tabor. Oh, and it also states that after the explosion, many of the houses were found unstable. There's a lot of imagery online. Well, I wouldn't say a lot, but there's a fair amount of imagery online where you could take a look at the older houses and they were slouching and they were slanted as if the ground below it was sinking. We have Einstein Philadelphia Medical Center on our left. A powerful early warning that the neighborhood of Logan was sinking came 27 years earlier, right around the corner from the 1986 incident at 10th Street between Cortland and Wyoming, which is the area that we just exited a few minutes ago. We're at 13th and Tabor. I'm going to make this right-hand turn on the 5500 block of 13th Street. We're traveling northbound. We're about to approach Alany Avenue. We have a fruit cart on our right. It's a fruit truck, actually. And we have a Jamaican food truck also. It's like a Caribbean and American food spot. We're next to medical businesses and whatnot, so that, that's a, you know, a good lunch spot for people just to stop by and grab a quick eat. The explosion that took place on the afternoon of Halloween Eve, Mischief Night, a trio of explosions a few hours apart rocked the row houses of the 800 block of West Roosevelt Boulevard, causing damage and alarm. Then the 1959 incident conveniently slipped from the public's memory, now one of the dozens of news stories from 1980s and 1990s recalled what happened in 1959. Let's make this right on Alany Ave. So was that a cover up? Or was it simply forgotten? 
After the 1986 explosions, engineers found nearly 1,000 houses unstable. As the then Mayor W. Wilson Good put it, the residents of Logan came to the city and demanded, solve this problem. The Good administration responded, creating a corporation to pool state and federal money to compensate and relocate the homeowners. So that answers my question a little earlier on in the story. We're passing 11 finality. We're passing the 5600 block of Warnock on our left hand side. Let's make this right hand turn on 10th Street. We're gonna stop at this yellow. Oh, there's a car behind me that's pressed. So let's take this yellow. Doesn't say no right on red. We're gonna make this right hand turn. They were tailing me as if they were connected to my vehicle's body. <laughs> We're at 10th and Tabor. I'm going to choosey choosey. I'm trying to stay away from traffic. There's traffic on my right hand side. I'm gonna go left on the 900 block of Tabor. So you can read more about that incident if you wanna learn about it. There's a whole dedicated web page to it. Let me go forward. I, I was gonna go through Wagner, but we just came from that area. We're at Tabor and Wagner. Let me just continue towards Tabor. This is Tabor Road. I can only imagine that being heartbreaking to some of the lifelong residents of the area, because if you grew up in that area and one day that happened and then you have to get up and I'm gonna let this car behind me go by because people people are really trying to move All right. yeah I can only imagine that being like almost traumatizing in a sense to have your whole life change in a blink of an explosion I hope they were fairly compensated you know I wonder if they receive a good amount of money for the property where they were able to get something, if not as good, better. You know what I mean? Or did they get ripped off? We're gonna make this left-hand turn on the 500 block of Somerville Ave. We're coming off of 6th Street, 6th and Somerville. We have some Kentucky license plates on my right-hand side. Now, if you wanted to go towards Island near Fern Rock, you would travel more left. So right now we're traveling eastbound. On my left is northbound. On my right is southbound. Behind me is westbound. If you wanna see more of Island near Fern Rock, you would go northbound, which is to my left. I'm gonna make a right-hand turn on 5th Street. Let's make this right hand turn on Fisher Ave. Run the 500 block of Fisher Ave, passing Fairhill and Fisher. Traveling about 15 miles an hour. I tend to travel relatively slow, unless there's cars behind me, which there is right now. We're at Six and Fisher. Would you like to go, ma'am? You all right? And the person behind me is beeping and I'm just trying to let them go by. And they're not gonna let her go by either. I'm gonna let him go by. He didn't even wanna let a pedestrian cross the street. You know, the pedestrian has the right of way. And he had to stop anyway. Go figure. That's how karma works.
You ever heard of Murphy's Law? We're passing a 5200 block of Franklin. We're gonna make this left hand turn. We're turning down 8th Street. We're passing Wellens. Now we're back at the intersection we were at, where that no outlet is at for the park. <clears throat> 8th and Duncannon Ave. Duncannon Ave is also known as Marion Johnson Way. Barrett Playground is on our left. We're going to continue traveling southbound. Let's make this left-hand turn and go down Franklin. Let's see, we're on Lindley. We're gonna turn left on Lindley Ave. This is the 700 block of Lindley Ave. And then we're gonna turn right on Franklin Street. Hopefully there's no construction going on here. And it does look like at the end of this road, there's some construction. It looks like they possibly did some sort of plumbing work on this block because in front of everyone's home, there's a patch of asphalt. We're at Franklin and Ruscom, and we're not gonna go any further forward because there's a bulldozer in front of us doing work. So we're just gonna turn. We're at 8th and Ruscom. Florida license plates on our right hand side. Now we're at 9th and Ruscom. Let's make this left hand turn on 9th Street. Back at Rockland, we have a green light. We're traveling southbound. From here, we have a nice view of the Philadelphia skyline. You can see the city of Philadelphia standing on this corner of 9th and Loudoun. There's a ton of trash and debris out here on our left and on our right. So I wonder if the ground still shows toxic levels, if they tested the dirt, you know what I mean? And if it is, my next question will be, is there any nearby water? Is there any type of, you know, underground streams, natural springs, something of that caliber where the city, because I see sewage. So I wonder if any of that toxic chemical seeps into the water system.
and how effective is their cleaning system and are they able to address that problem or has time helped it clean up because that was what in the 80s when 2024 well over 30 years ago Right now we're here at the Roosevelt Boulevard, but still on my left and on my right, you see these barricades? That's where the Logan Triangle was located. And there was houses right here facing the Roosevelt Boulevard. I'm gonna make this right-hand turn. Check it out. Again, more empty lots. This is a large footprint. This is a very, very large footprint. Could you imagine driving through here? I'm sure some of you can imagine. Seeing the home, seeing the kids playing, people riding bicycles, kids playing outside, mothers and fathers sitting on their steps. I was gonna go left, but let's pass right through here on Warnock. Warnock Street. So Warnock ran through my right from my left. But it appears that this is a one way and I would have went through it, but it's a one way on my left hand side. There's still a church that stands over there at the corner. We're at 11th and Cortland. I'm gonna make this left-hand turn on 11th Street. Yeah, you can see the church on my left-hand side. You see that building far off on the left-hand side of the screen? That church still stands. I'm surprised the church wasn't compromised. Am I able to drive through Warnock Street from here? That'll be awesome if I can at least take one pass through Warnock from right here. Let me see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for it. I don't think I'm supposed to go up this. I, I think this might be, may or may not be a one way. But YOLO, you only live once, let's go. Look at that's the Roosevelt Boulevard on my right hand side, one of the deadliest highways in America. And boom, we're on Warnock Street, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out. So directly in front of us, this block, the next block, and I believe there's a third block before it gets back to where there's actually houses. So I think about three or so blocks of Warnock disappeared on my left and on my right. Wow. I can't imagine. Because where I grew up in Philadelphia, I grew up in a pretty tight knit block. And I wasn't one of those kids that moved around often, every several years, every couple months, we went from house to house to house. No, I was planted most of my life. I was planted in the same community the same neighbors and I couldn't imagine that happening to the community that I was born and raised in you don't have nothing to come back to all you have is memories stories you can talk amongst your friends you can talk amongst you know the neighbors whoever remembers if you have any pictures and that was back in the 80s back then folks never really took pictures like how they do now you, you know what I mean Folks never really took photographs like how they do now because back then you had to develop them and it was probably more costly, you know what I mean? It was, because I, like, I'll be honest with, with you, but before cell phone technology came out, there's a bunch of pictures that I wish I had that I don't have. Like one of my first cars, it was an orange car that I customized. I don't have a single photo of that orange vehicle. And I wish I did, but that's because it was before, I, I guess it makes me sound old, which I'm not, but that was before the internet and smartphones went really booming. Like, obviously we had internet, but we had like dial up internet, AOL and stuff, you know? But if that all happened back in the eighties and you heard there was an incident in the fifties, there's probably not much documentation of that community existing other than the memories of the residents. And once the residents age out and the residents have great, great, great grandchildren and they're no longer here to share the stories of what was there, who's gonna keep it alive? Let's make this left-hand turn 
on Kamak Street. This is the 4500 block of Kamak Street. It's up to us as gatekeepers and story holders of the community to keep our neighborhood's names alive. Especially when you're an original resident of an area and you live there in, in that area for so long, you, could run, you, you know everybody's name, you know everybody from the block. You know, and that was back in the time when, when your neighbor was able to reprimand you and you had to be in before a certain time. And you know, that was before technology like took over and ruined childhood. You go outside and you play with with a ball. You play curve ball. You you know you play half ball. You 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 play handball. You play you know what I mean? Dodge ball. You play anything with a ball. You play with sticks. You play with rocks. You play with dirt. You play with gravel. You get your knees scraped up. You know what I mean? Now you'd be lucky if you see a child outside. Back then, if you got a dollar for every kid you seen outside, you'd be a millionaire. Nowadays. If you get a dollar for every kid you see outside, you'll be in debt. You'll be in the negative. Because there's barely kids outside. But that's why I like to do these type of documentations because they may hold value to someone out there. That's what made me originally start this project several years ago is that I saw my neighborhood change at a rapid pace. It was getting gentrified. We had a lot of new folks coming in to invest or to move in or for whatever the reason was. And sad enough to say, a lot of the original residents from my block moved out. A lot of the original folks, they, they're no longer there. And it's a whole new crowd. And guess what? Sad enough to say, it no longer feels like home. You know, obviously, the setting is something I'm, I'm wholeheartedly accustomed to. I'm so used to the setting and so used to the environment. But you got new faces to look at. It's not the same. It don't have the same pizzazz, the same energy. And I could imagine the same would apply for this community. And each and every community in Philadelphia. Different neighborhoods across the inner cities. There's a different lifestyle that takes place in urban environments versus the suburbs. Suburbs are cool and all, peaceful, tranquil, quiet, but the inner city provides an experience for youth that is damn near unmatched compared to other parts of the world. Just being inside an inner city and sitting on your stoop with your friends late night talking coming up with endless stories, endless conversations, endless memories, talking about what you want or what you think the future will look like. And one day in the blink of an eye, where did it all go? In this case, in this story, a whole community disappeared. But I'm sure there's individuals that are still keeping Logan Triangle's name alive. People still reminiscing on the past, and it's only right. It's only right. Let's make this left hand turn on 13th and Loudon. We're at Old York Road and Loudon Street in the Logan neighborhood. I'm gonna make this left hand turn on Old York Road, the 4700 block of Old York Road. We're exiting the 1300 block of Loudon Street. 